Good afternoon and welcome to a brand new Day Ticket Diaries. Today you join me down at Twine Ash Fishery. I've took a walk around a few of the lakes and I'm going to be having my session over on Pit 7. I found a few fish in a quiet corner. The fish that I've seen in this peg, they seem really happy. There's a few feeding on the bottom and instead of sort of messing about, setting up the bed chair, the bivy, Getting all nice and comfortable, I'm going to get them rods out the rod bag, get the bushwhacker bait and pull, ship a couple of rigs out there nice and quietly as I do think there's an opportunity for a quick bite. At the start of the session when I found feeding fish, I only wanted to put a small parcel of bait around that rig. The last thing I wanted to do was overfill the spoon, but be loads of bait on the bottom is, to be honest, if there's feeding fish bait, all you need is a hook bait in that area. When putting the rods out for the night, I put a little bit more in the spoon, just so there's enough bait there throughout the hours of darkness. Get away from the snag. Get away from the snag. There we go. Quickest bite I've ever had. I wish fishing was that easy all the time. 30 seconds, a minute, if that. But there was quite a few fish around there and looking over there at the moment, I can see a little bit of fizzing. So I think before I get this fish out on the mat, I'm gonna take a quick walk around round to the area next door, just so I can get a better view, see if there are a few fish in the area, and if there are, I'm gonna be getting my bushwhacker straight back over there and see if we can make it 2-0. Yes. Yeah. When fishing small, intimate ponds, there's a few different things that I'm looking for when I'm deciding where to set up. The first thing is the obvious, I'm looking for carp. Now, if I spot carp sat in a weed bed, not really doing anything, I'll take note where them carp are sat, but I won't fish for them. What I'm looking for is coloured water, a bit of fizzing, ideally heads down, tails up in shallow water, and then I'll use a bushwhacker to drop the rig near them feeding fish. It's also really important that you time the positioning of your rig perfectly. The last thing you want really is to be fishing in about a foot of water for them to be 10 carp there, heads down, tails up and dropping a big lead on the head is probably gonna spook. However, on other situations, if you're careful enough and the fish move off for 30 seconds or so, that is the time to place your rig. One other thing that I'll do to help locate the carp is when I'm walking around the lake, just with a handful or so, I'll bait up little spots in the edge and keep an eye on them spots. I might find carp feeding in one of them spots or I might return there a few hours later and the spot might have been polished and I know I've the carpet in the area and that will make the decision much easier where to set up. A little bit smaller, but a fish is a fish. Get in that net with your big brother. <laughs> I have a new favourite type of fishing and that is using that bushwhacker. Two carp in the net within probably about an hour of arriving at the venue. <sighs> Made up. So we'll get these fish sorted and then I'll get a little game plan sorted for this evening. But if it carries on like this, it's going to be a great session. And there we have it, the first fish of the session, the bigger of the two, the them two bites, and it just shows the effectiveness of using a bushwhacker bait and pull the rig. For this one, it'd only been out a minute, and the smaller one down there, it'd only been out about five, 10 minutes. So I'm gonna get this slip back. To be honest, I don't feel like there's another opportunity in this swim. So I'm gonna get that little one out, show you guys that, and then I'm gonna go to the peg next door where I've spotted a few fish, and I feel like we might be able to get another one just before dark. When I'm fishing in this way, 
I break the session up into two halves. There's the mobile side, and then to be honest, there's the camping side. The mobile side is the most important. What you want to be doing is traveling light, looking for the carp throughout the day, moving with maybe one or two rods, moving around the lake. And by doing that, hopefully you'll catch a few fish, but by doing so, you'll be able to locate, hopefully, where the majority of the stock are holding up. When it comes to the evening, you'll be able to set up base camp in that area where you've found them calf and give yourself a chance of catching a few fish in the hours of darkness. I'm in a little bit of a rush to get the rods out because we're starting to lose the light and I'm greedy. I want to catch one more calf before dark, but this is the setup that I'm going to be putting out there. Very basic, it pretty much is just a simple hair rig with a little bit of silicon on the hook but I'll run more in depth about this setup later on in the session. But for now, let's get it out in the pond and try and get a bite. Traps are set for the hours of darkness. I've been in the swim for a few hours now, and surprisingly, or surprisingly to me, I haven't been able to catch anything yet. When I jumped in this peg earlier, there was quite a few fish in the area, and I felt like shipping out the rigs with a bushwhacker, I was going to be able to get a quick bite. It hasn't happened. I'm not too disappointed about it, as I am going into the hours of darkness fairly confident. I'm getting the odd line of heaven there. So yeah, if I don't catch anything by the morning, I'm going to be getting out of that bivy getting mobile and looking for them carp because today just shows if you can get that rig in the perfect area then bites are certainly there to be had but i've just got a bit of food on the go i'm going to try and stay warm as them temperatures are certainly dropping and i think it's just about that time of year to go get the zt clothing on I've woken up this morning with some good news. I had a very good sleep, but I didn't catch anything. To be honest, I'm surprised that I wasn't able to catch anything. Um, there was fish here. I've woken up this morning. There's still the odd fish crashing, but to be honest, I'm not gonna let it bother me too much. I'm not too disheartened because after yesterday's action, watching the fish's reaction with that bait and pull, I feel like once that sun gets up a little bit, I'm gonna have a coffee, get re-energized, get out there and look for them fish because I certainly feel like there's going to be a few more chances on the cards. The bait mix that I've been using on this session consisted of two ingredients. The first bait that I added into the spoon was Scopex Grid Flake. The reason why I was using this was when I tipped the spoon over, this was going to sink slowly and settle on anything on the bottom. It would be presented on gravel or if I was landing on silt or weed, but it was going to flutter down nicely and the fish were going to be able to spot that bait. The next ingredient was the large seed mix. To be honest, the reason I added this was it just added a little bit of colour and it would give me hook bait options if I wanted to try different things. The hook baits that I've been using on this session, I've sort of went for a match the hatch style. Now, the reason I've done this is the water here is quite clear and I felt like fishing a bright white, pink, yellow pop-up, it might put the fish on edge. So using a nice critically balanced match the hatch wafter, maybe a little bit of foam or plastic spray corn on top. And I felt using a hook bait like that, which blended nicely into the mix that I was using, it would make the fish feel safe and feed confidently. Oh, there we go, a little bit out of the blue to be honest. Um, sort of quietened off, we've had a bit of rain the last hour or so. I haven't seen that many fish in the area. Yeah, I just walked down the bank, I was just having a look at the spot. The rod is ripped off. Not a monster by any means, but I'll take anything. A uh, fish is a fish, so I'll get this one out. I mean, looks like we could be about to um, have a little break in the weather. So I'll get it out and then have a little look and see if we can find a few more cars. There we have it, fish number three. The fish are getting smaller, but it just shows that the future for the lake is bright and I'm sure 
this is gonna grow into 20 or 30 pounds one day. I'm gonna take a lap around, see if I can find a few bigger fish, and hopefully it won't be too long until we get another one. Yeah, they definitely feel safe in here, I think, because if you're a casting, certainly you can't get down here, but if we're crafty with the bushwhacker, I should be able to get a rig, maybe not right in here, but in the area. This is the rig that I've been using on this session. Now, it's a little bit different compared to what I normally put out there. There's a few changes and different reasons behind why I've made them changes. The first one is the length. This is quite a short rig, probably four, five inches in length, and to be honest, it's something that you'd probably find in a solid bag. But the reason why I've decided to make this change is when I'm using the bushwhacker and I'm dropping the rig down there, it's a very small parcel of bait. Them fish are gonna come in, grub around and be off. And I want something nice and short so when them fish do pick up the rig, it's gonna come into contact with the lead much faster. The hook link choice is also something different compared to what I use. This is 15 pound armor link. It's a supple braid. And the reason for this is when I'm dropping it from a bait and spoon, I feel like if I use coated braid or fluorocarbon, it could stick up and possibly spook the carp, but with this being supple, it's gonna lie there perfectly over the bed of bait. The hook on there is a size four Fang X. On there, I've got a little bit of silicon just to hold the hair in place. And on this rig in particular, I've got a 12 mil Scopex grid wafter, trimmed down a little bit and a little bit of yellow foam on top. I haven't added any putty or shrink tube onto this rig. And the reason for that is this is quite a critically balanced hook bait and when the fish pick it up, adding unnecessary items onto the rig isn't going to do me any favours. The final thing that I've done on this rig is I've just added a short anti-tangle sleeve on the other end. This isn't really to stop tangles, it's just to cover the loop when I'm attaching it onto the lead system. So that's the rig that I've been using on this session. It's very simple but effective. It's been working so far on this session and hopefully it's going to catch us a few more fish. Well, I've just been unloaded up the barrel and I've came back round to where I've spotted them fish earlier. There's a couple of fish down there, I'm going to give it an hour or so, Is to be honest, it's looking pretty lifeless over in that swim. So I'm just going to get the bushwhacker now. I'm only going to fish one rod, I feel like if I put two rods down there, it's going to be too many lines in the water. Get a chop sack, give it a go, because you just never know. I'm a poet and I don't know it. After speaking to one of the bailiffs, he gave me a bit of advice that most of the fishing on this lake was going to be sightseeing and stalking. I took this into account and decided to prepare the bait mix, prepare a few rigs, so when I found them carp, I wasn't going to be messing around making a mix, having to tie rigs, I knew that everything was there to hand. I also adapted the baiting pole into this situation just to make the job a little bit easier. For this fishery in focus, you join me down at Twinerish Fishery. I'm going to be looking at Pit 7, but before jumping over to that lake and giving you a little bit more info, I'm going to tell you about the rest of the complex. The complex is made up of eight lakes, six of which are day ticket lakes, however Pit 6 is a lake exclusive only lake and Pit 3 is for members only. One added bonus of this fishery is you've got the river bond that runs through the complex which you're allowed to fish, which is perfect if you're into a little bit of river fishing. There's an on-site tackle shop, toilet facilities and a team of bailiffs so if you need any help or you've got any questions, they're there to help you. As mentioned, there's six day ticket lakes but the one that I've been fishing on this session is Pit 7. In Pit 7, there's a good head of scaly carp. There's also a few added bonus koi in there. There's a good handful of 30 pounders. However, the fish that most people are targeting when fishing that lake is a common which can reach up to 35 pounds at the right time of year, known as floppy tail. The lake size itself is two and a half to three acres with one large island in the middle. The depths go down to around six feet. However, there's also a couple of shallow bars that run side to side up against the island. What I'm going to do now is talk about a few of the pegs in areas on this lake so if you're coming down here it gives you a better understanding what to expect when fishing pit 7. I'm going to start off with the two main pegs that I've been fishing on this session. The peg where I started is a peg known as shackles and when you look to the right on this map 
there's a large double swim and that's where I've been doing the night on this trip. When fishing these pegs, they both give you access to fishing the shallow bar that runs from the bank up to the island. This can be a great interception point as the fish move over the shallow bar and I'd certainly be checking it out if the sun's out or the temperatures are quite warm. Just like the majority of the pegs on the lake, these two pegs also give you access to fishing up against the island. Moving clockwise around the lake when you look at the map, you then go onto the road bank. Now there's a few pegs on this bank. The great thing about these pegs is it gives you the majority of the open water on the lake. Again, you're getting great access to the island, but the best thing about these pegs is there's deep marginal spots along this bank which makes it perfect for fishing in the edge. As you carry on moving around this map, you then meet the beach swims. These swims are two large double pegs that give you a great access to the margin on the island, but from the left hand side of these two pegs as you look at the map, you're also able to fish the second shallow bar that runs out to the island. Finally, as you move around the lake, you then met with the point swim. Now this is a large double peg, which is perfect if you're having a social with a mate. It gives you good access to the island, a large amount of open water. However, the main feature in this peg is the inlet pipe that comes in from pit six. Carp love to spend time in this area and patrolling up and down this margin. There are a few of the main areas that I'd be checking out when fishing pit seven. However, I wouldn't take that as gospel. And the most important thing is when you're coming down here, speak to staff and fishery bailiffs as they'll give you up to date information where you're likely to find the fish. We're back in the swim after giving it an hour down in that quiet corner. I was feeling confident that the white devils, also known as swans, typically became in and blew my chance of catching any fish. So I've came back round to the swim where I'd done last night. Tactic wise, when I put these rods out, I'm gonna put the same rigs that I've been catching on this session. The only difference that I'm going to do, however, is where I'm positioning them in the swim. The first rod is gonna go down as literally right now, there's a few fish feeding down there and I feel like I might be able to nick one before dark. The other rod on the other hand, I'm going to put it in much deeper water. There was quite a few fish there last night showing in the hours of darkness, so you never know. I feel like this change could bring on a night bite. We've just ordered some pizzas, so I'm going to get these rods out nice and quick, fill up my stomach, sit back, relax, and watch the evening unfold. I'm shattered, I have no idea what time of night it is, but we have another car. So I'm gonna take a stab in the dark, say it's half two, three o'clock in the morning. I might be completely wrong, I might have just fell asleep, but whatever time it is, I don't care because we've got another one in the net and it is actually bigger than the last couple of car that we've been landing. And there we have it. Now that I've had five minutes to wake up and sort of get my life together, we can have a look at this wonderful fish. Probably just over 20 pounds. It's about one o'clock in the morning, so there are plenty of chances for us to get a couple more bites before first slide. But if not, I'm more than happy with this. It was actually caught on that rod that I moved in the deep water, so it was definitely worth watching where the fish were showing on that first night as it resulted in this one. So a great little midnight interruption. Get it put back, get back to bed, and you never know, we might be able to get another one. I'm going to run through my three top tips for when fishing over on pit seven. My first tip is if you've got access to a bushwhacker baiting pole, make sure to use that within your angling. It's going to make the process of putting the rig out much quieter, much smoother, and less chances of spooking the fish. If I don't have access to this, I'll make sure to use light lead. As if I'm using a three, four, or five ounce lead, casting it out there in shallow water, it really isn't ideal. 
So using a light lead, we'll make sure to minimise the splash when the rig goes in the lake. My second tip is, since the water is clear and quite shallow, bird life can be a bit of a problem. So I'll take this into account when I'm making the bait mix. I'll make the bait mix match the bottom, what I'm fishing over, keep it quite dark, take any bits of colour out of the mix, so then birds are a lot less likely to spot the bait on the bottom. My third and final tip is, when you're fishing over there, since it's quite a small lake, it certainly pays off doing multiple laps around the lake looking for them carp. It's all well and good getting out the car, doing a lap, finding a few fish, but if you're constantly doing that throughout your session, you're going to be able to track where them carp are moving, which areas are looking likely, and overall, it's just going to improve the success of your session. Well, that is the session over and done with. And to be honest, I've really enjoyed fishing down here. In total, I've been able to land four fish, did lose a couple, but that's all part and parcel of fishing. But I'll certainly be coming back down here. There was actually a big and feeding on the spot earlier, and I feel like if I was to stay a little bit longer, maybe I'd have a chance, but it's time to hit the road. So I hope you've learned a few things about this fishery, so when you come down, you'll be able to catch yourself a few fish.